Hey guys, Toy Kate here for another RK One Up review, and this time we're looking at RK One Up's latest machine, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which was announced at Evo 2022 and was one of the titles that was perceived as Mission Impossible due to the complex licensing copyright nightmare that comes with it. But now it's here. Let's take a look at this beauty. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, hailed as one of the best competitive fighting game ever and one of the most loved fighting game in the community. Features iconic characters from both Capcom and Marvel Universe pit against each other in a 3 vs. 3 team battle. And this has finally been freed. You really have to look back last year when Maximilian Du started this famous hashtag FreeMVC2 online campaign, which really kickstarted this possibility. So now we have the final product. How does it compare to its previous iteration of RK1 Up products? Does it live up to the hype? And should you buy this? Well, I'm hoping to answer this question for you and let you decide if this is worth your hard-earned money. So now this is available in Australia for $1,300 Australian and the US for $599, which is a lot of money compared to the early days when it was $299 US without a riser. So this comes with eight games, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes, X-Men Children of the Atom, X-Men Mutant Ocopulips, and Marvel Super Heroes in the War of Gems. As you can see, there's a lot of overlap in titles that is found on early iterations of RK One Up, such as X Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes, and Marvel vs. Capcom. So, if you're owner of these cabs, the tough question is buying this will kind of make your existing cab obsolete, especially now in a new form factor, which is more closer to designs found in arcades back in the 90s, not to mention this is also Wi Fi enabled. Let's quickly look over the packaging and what's inside. The retail box itself is a real piece of art, having vibrant exclusive artwork that is only found on this product. Inside the box is well packaged and protected, so the chances of damages edges on panels is unlikely now, which is common back in the early days. There are three boxes, one of them are the panels for the main cabinet and riser, one for the monitor and one for the control panel. The only item that was not secure in the box was the coin door. As good as the packaging and knowing my luck with RK1 Up products, one of my panels did come damaged. Not from transit, but it looks like it was damaged from the factory and from the strap. As you can see, the artwork has peeled, but this was a non-issue for me, as this section of the cab is covered by the new control panel box found in the new generation cabs, which I'll show you later. This was my only imperfection in terms of cosmetic damage, which is a slight improvement. My last purchase, which was a big blue, had a whole panel that was completely damaged, but luckily RK1UP did look after me and sent me a replacement with no questions asked. The MDF quality is identical to previous RK1UP products, so don't expect any premium upgrades with the price increase. The backboard is still raw and one of my biggest dislike of this design. I wish they can provide a black colored backboard as per the 3D rendered image on the website. This would enhance the cab dramatically. Building the cab for me took more time than previous models. This is due to the new riser panel to extend the two sides and now with the new control panel construction. I can confirm the monitor is BOE and not the more inferior screens found on other RK1 products released earlier this year, which is plagued with washed out images and horrible viewing angles. Personally, I have not purchased any of those products, so I can't comment if it's really bad, but I've been told those screens were the same model found on iArcade. And if you see my iArcade review, those screens were horrendous. I really liked how they used thick pieces of steel for reinforcement for connection between the main panel and the extension. However, as you can see, the side art did not line up with those two panels, which is not noticeable from a distance, but for the price you pay, you wouldn't expect this so if you're anal about such details just be aware of this the marquee looks gorgeous love the artwork the colors and looks nice when the led is on though it's worth mentioning that the clarity and resolution on this marquee can be better the fold coin door to my surprise look really good this is my first rk1 up with a fold coin door and i'm really impressed how real it looks i really like how rk1 up continues to add more features to their cabs over time and this is an inclusion i really like one of the new features found in the new RK1 Up products is a new control panel design. Previously, control panels simply looked like a piece of wood that would just slap on top. But with the new design, you get the complete control panel box look, which really gives it the nostalgia factor that was missing in the early generation cabs. What they've done here is added additional side panels and the front panel to achieve this look. What may seem like a minor alteration from the original has had a huge impact in the visual department. One additional step not covered in the manual that I highly recommend is cutting out a bit of protective foam that was included in the box and adding it to the control panel. This actually raises the control panel and make it more flush to the side and more comfortable while playing. Overall, I can't say I enjoy building these RK1 up cabs. It seems to take longer and longer with each iteration they release. What used to be a 30 to 45 minute build with a Gen 1, which is now taking one to one and a half hours. I do understand we're getting more features, cosmetic enhancements, which is probably the cause in increased building time, but probably it's the least thing I look forward to when buying an RK1 up cab. When all fully built, this cab looks stunning. Truth be told, 
when this was first announced, I was not a fan with the mismatched color scheme. I thought the control panel art did not match with the blue exclusive artwork and riser. But seeing it now in front of me, I kind of changed my mind. This cab does look stunning, especially when placed against the IRK and Big Blue. So how did RK1 Up manage to do this? I really think the addition of the side and front control panels really lifted the appearance of the cabinet to give it the premium look and feel. I hope the next iteration of the Big Blue incorporates this design. The control panel when compared with the Big Blue from 2021 has a minor change. Gone are the light up deck protectors, which was kind of cool but unnecessary. P1, P2 buttons have moved away from the middle and towards the side. The headphone jack is now placed more to the side to avoid the headphone wires getting in the way during gameplay. One huge improvement is the height of the control panel. I think they got the height perfect on the midway design. As you can see, the IRK is just too high, while the big blue is just too low. And for a guy like me who is six foot one, this is the perfect height. The joystick now uses octagonal gate, which is very important to note, as many competitive players, especially Japanese, prefer square gate, even myself. The buttons are slightly different and feels like an upgrade from Big Blue. So it looks like RK1UP has continued to improve the joystick button slowly, which has always been a downside to these expensive products and very key to the experience. For the price they charge today, I would expect at least Sunwell clones. The marquee, as mentioned earlier, looks really nice and the LED has a perfect brightness to not make the marquee overly bright. The only downside is the image is not a high resolution one. So that's the only minus here. The sound is also an improvement as you immediately feel and hear it when you switch on the machine. Let's rock! The intro sound by default is very high and I haven't been able to adjust this. I did find the volume when set to one still being too loud, especially when compared to a big blue, which seems to be the opposite of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Everything by default is lower. The intro, the volume one, which is probably to my liking. One little quirk I did notice with the volume only in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is that it will randomly turn the volume down by one during gameplay. I've had this happen to me a good five, six times in the last three weeks of testing. So I'm not sure what triggers this and hopefully it's just a software bug that can be fixed via an update. Let's talk about the biggest surprise here, the BOE screen. When I first turned this on, I was amazed how vibrant the pictures were on this screen. This has to be the best RK one up screen to date. I've never seen such vibrant crisp images before and there is no loss of images on any angle, which I've seen a lot of complaints in other RK one up products such as the Golden T XL, Mortal Kombat 30th edition, and even the supposedly premium IRK. When you put them side by side, there is no doubt the quality of the screen is night and day between the IRK and the Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I tested all the games locally and also online for a week. I can't see any issue with local gameplay and all games working as intended with a couple of concerning issues. The most obvious is the online lobbies for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is not open. Yes, it's been nearly a month since I purchased this unit and the online lobby is still not open. I've been waiting for this feature to be enabled to complete my review, but it looks like there is no indication when this is coming. It just says coming soon. This could be next week or next month. Who knows? And this is a problem. How can they release a marquee title on a cabinet without online mode? When I purchased this cab, I was not informed about any delays of this key feature. And it's one of the main reasons why I bought this. If you check the RK1 Up website, it clearly states Wi-Fi enabled for online play. This may be partially true with other games, but I'm sure anyone buying this cab is mainly buying for Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The second major issue is input lag when Scanline is enabled in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This was actually patched last week while creating this video, and upon testing it, the input lag when scanline is on wasn't as noticeable as a day one build and is passable as a casual player. However, if you're competitive, this may impact you. As you can see from the footage, there is a slight input delay when comparing it with the scanline off. For me, it didn't bother me as I prefer playing without scan lines. Another issue worth mentioning that I found during my initial tests was the desyncing between other players on other RK1 Up Legacy cabs, where games between two cabs were desyncing and becoming two separate games, and the loss and wins will be registered for both. Luckily, this has been fixed last week with an update on those Legacy cabs. So, if the main reason for purchasing this cabinet is for online gameplay, 
I would hold off until RK went up first, opens the lobby, and also fix the scan line input delay issue. So overall, Marvel vs. Capcom is one of the best looking cabs to date released by RK went up. This was an impulsive buy and was never high on my want list, as Marvel vs. Capcom 2 really didn't add any nostalgia to me, and it still doesn't. But I understand why there's so much love for this title and why it's so desirable. Having a whopping 56 characters from both Capcom and Marvel Universe seems unreal. I can't deny how stunning this cap looks. I thought the Big Blue was on the best cap last year, but they've taken the physical form factor to another level this year with the midway design. I really think the huge difference is the control panel design, and it has really lifted what was originally considered as a toy product from the Gen 1 days to a really a standout piece now in your games room. So what are my callouts for this cab? The good, stunning exclusive artwork, and a beautiful marquee, even though the resolution is not the best. Improved control panel design, that's perfect height. Stunning screen. Plug and play. No need to sign up or create an account for online play. Just switch on and play against anyone. Subscription free. We seem to forget this and take it for granted. Though it's not a huge community to the comparison of 5K, PlayStation and Switch, there's always games to be found throughout the day. And that will slowly increase as it costs nothing to play online, right? There's also an Ethernet port and of course, Marvel vs Capcom 2. The bad. 599 US and 1300 Australian, that's quite a lot for a hard earned money for a device that has QA issues in both actual cabinet and software. And it's still three quarter scale. That's cramped for two adult men. Misalign artwork. Software issues that can be fixed via updates, but how did simple issues such as syncing between other cabinets, input lag not found during their testing. They even hired the legendary Justin Wong as part of the QA team and he must have missed this as well. But luckily this can be fixed via software updates. No online gameplay at launch for Marvel vs Capcom 2 is a slap in the face for those who pre-order in advance and not made aware of this delay of this functionality until they switch it on. There are still no updates for when this is coming so it could be weeks, months for all we know. Risers. I thought the riser days were numbered but it looks like they're here to stay. I mean, there's definitely a use case for risers such as portability but the purpose of these products is to bring back nostalgia and risers take away from that. Input delay with scan lines. Hopefully this can be fixed. So what are my final thoughts and would I recommend this? I think this is a great looking cab, no doubt, but it's hard to ignore the retail price for a three quarter machine from a toy company. It's taken huge steps from the early days and as you can see, RK1 up is listening to the end users and continue to improve the form factor to bring back nostalgia back into the house. But at a price of 600 US and 1300 Australian, it doesn't justify the value you're getting due to the QA issues and unpolished and unfinished features before releasing it to the consumer base. Not having online function for their marquee title is huge and not providing any timeline is even worse. It's hard to recommend a cab that feels incomplete and also without fully testing it. I've had this for nearly a month now and the Marvel vs Capcom online feature is still not available. That's really hard to accept as an end user after forking out 1300 Australian. When you pay a premium, you expect premium. At its current state and price, I will hold off until the online feature for Marvel vs Capcom 2 is enabled and all the issues are ironed out. Alright guys, that's all for this video. I really hope you liked it and found it informative. Hit that like button if you haven't and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.